Hi everyone, my name is JC. I'm the owner of uh, Hong Kong Film Store based in Hong Kong. Today I'm going to talk about how you can shoot expired 35mm negative film um, in point and shoot cameras or any cameras really where you can't uh, set manually your ISO speed. So understanding what the film is, it's, it's basically a negative uh, medium where you capture light and as time goes by, the chemistry deteriorates, the activity level decreases, uh, and basically the, um, the light sensitivity um, dramatically decreases. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to shoot this not at box speed. So for example, this is Vista 400. Um, let's imagine if this was expired by, by say five to 10 years. Um, and you want to shoot it at ISO 100 or 50 or 200, something like that. And if you want to shoot it in a point and shoot camera, there's basically no way we can set the ISO. They will shoot it at 400. If you go, go ahead and develop it at, at a lab, it will come back uh, really underexposed. You're not going to be able to see anything and it's going to be uh, basically a waste of your effort. Sorry, that was my hamster. What you're going to have to do, there are two ways to do this. And uh, the first way is basically to fool the, the DX code uh, reading system from uh, in your point and shoots or your DSLRs. And to give you a very quick introduction of what DX code is, basically this area here with the silver bits and the black bits. So these are basically metallic contact points for the DX read codes, uh, reading system of your cameras. If we leave it at this, it's going to be 400. There are charts on Google where it shows that basically this is the pattern for 400, there is a pattern for 200, 100, and so on. Um, what we need to do is we need to modify this to let the camera know that you are shooting something of a lower ISO. So it will allow more light in. And as a result, you will have a light meter that gives you more light to be able to uh, get to this film and you'll have a better exposed picture, hopefully. Now. There are, there are two ways to do this modification. There is the way where you can Google and you can basically change the pattern of this, give it, give it a very accurate ISO reading, so you can to modify it to become a 100 or 50, or a much quicker way, if you, especially when you're in, on the field and you don't have a lot of materials with you, is you can use a piece of uh, masking tape or, or any tape. Now, I don't have masking tape uh, in this house right now, so I'm just gonna use this duct tape, and it's very badly cut, but you get the idea. So basically what you're gonna do is, this is a DX code. Now we're gonna cover it with the masking tape or with the tape so that the camera will not be able to read the, um, that's my cat, <laughs> to be able to read the, uh, the DX code. And actually let me just do this and I'll explain to you why. So basically this is the area where you, uh, where the camera is gonna read the, the DX code reading. And I'm just gonna cover it with a piece of tape. Now this is really badly cut so you're gonna to have to cut it a little bit more precise if you want to do it um, more properly, but this will this will basically work as well. So I just covered the DX code and with the piece of tape. Now, if I if I stick this into my point and shoot camera um, or any cameras with DX code reading system, it's not going to be able to read what, what ISO it is. It will basically be um, a, a canister with with no DX code reading. Now what that does to the camera, that there is a program in all point and shoot cameras where if they are not able to read the DX code, they will treat it as if it is the lowest possible ISO film that their program allows. That means that if you stick this into say like a Olympus Mu or Olympus Mu 2, it will treat it like it's ISO 50 or ISO 100. The reason why they do that is because the um, that the aim for shooting any negative film is that you want to get as much light onto the film as possible, right? If you're not able to, to accurately know what ISO it is, the more light, the better, right? So this allows the camera to give in the most possible amount of light onto the film. As a result, you will be able to get a more exposed, a better lit photo, basically. So this is one way to do it. Um, and it's really useful, especially when you are in the field and you, and you basically don't have any fresh film left and you, you still want to put something in your point and shoot. And this is basically the only way where you can trick the system into setting your own ISO. The second way is um, pushing in development. So when you go ahead and develop your film, let's say you, know, let's say you, put, you don't have to tape on this film canister, 
um, and let's say that you want to um, shoot this anyway at 400, put in your camera, you finish shooting, you take the canister out. This is going to be a really underexposed film. So what you need to do is when you hit the lap, you need to ask the um, people there to push it a step or two steps um, up when you develop your film. What this does is that it creates a, um, an effect that's similar to having your ISO set lower, to basically overexposing the film. It's not exactly the same, it creates, a, it's basically a different physical reaction to the, to the film itself. It makes, it makes more grain, it boosts up the contrast a lot, and the, the texture becomes a little bit different as well to the film, but in, in, in layman terms, you will get more light onto the film, and there, there will be more information that you can see. They basically boost every information, um, whether it's, it's light or darkness, on the film. Um, for the scanner to see. So that's the second way where you can um, shoot expired film um, or anything that's non-box speed in your point-and-shoot cameras or any cameras where you can't set manual ISO. I recommend the first method. I recommend covering the, the DX code because it, it is always better to actually get physical light onto the film more um, as opposed to uh, using the push development because it creates more noise and you know there, there's sometimes it creates a very gritty image unless that's something that you want. I think it's better to get more actual light onto the film. Yep, so that's a, that's a two quick tips actually um, to, to shoot these expired films in your point-and-shoot cameras. Thank you.